A vision impairment is a diagnosed condition of the eye or the visual system that impacts on access to learning. There are multiple reasons why children can have a vision impairment um, and it, it gets back to which part of the visual system has been affected. So it can range from the eye and the structures inside the eye being affected to somewhere through the visual pathway which connects the eye through to the brain. Um, it can even be within the brain, which is an area called the visual cortex, which is at the back of the brain, where the seeing occurs. For example, a problem of the eye itself might be um, cataracts. A baby can be born with cataracts, or they can also be born with, say, a coloboma, which is a, um, a cleft of the eye where the eye hasn't formed properly. Um, and the other problems, say, with the visual pathway is maybe the baby was born with um, very small optic nerves and maybe messages aren't getting to the vision part of the brain and sometimes that's called cortical vision impairment. We think about 40 to 50 percent of the brain uses visual information. So if there's anything wrong with the eye receiving the image, passing it on to the brain or the brain using it, that can result in a vision impairment in a child. My daughter Simra is four years old and she is vision impaired. Simra has Leber's congenital amaurosis. It's also known as LCA for short. She's completely blind, um, so she has no vision in either eye. This is Ivy. She's almost 12 months old. Actually, in three days, she'll be 12 months old. Um, she was diagnosed with microphthalmia um, at eight weeks of age. Microphthalmia is a condition that affects the eyes. Micro meaning small, ophthalmia meaning eyes. So she has very small eyes. Um, and she had cataracts in both her eyes and they were removed at, at eight weeks. Ivy can see roughly about 30 to 50 centimetres in front of her. Um, she wears contacts in both of her eyes and occasionally when we can get her to keep them on, she wears glasses as well. The most common way a vision impairment will be diagnosed is by someone called an ophthalmologist who's an eye doctor and that's someone that has qualified as a normal doctor and has gone on and had specialised training after that. It usually begins with a parent or parents or a family member having a suspicion that the child's not seeing as they should be for their age. When Simra was a baby, um, she didn't actually make direct contact with anyone, like not with myself, my husband. Um, anyone that took her. She didn't follow anything with her eyes, she, there was no tracking um, and initially I knew for like for a week or so I thought you know it's just um, kind of okay maybe it's something that will come because I knew I had read about how children's vision sometimes is delayed um, however then I had friends who had babies and their children were kind of born like this and like, you know, posing for the camera kind of the day they were born and I was like, okay, there's something definitely not right. One of the most important milestones visually is that around about six to eight weeks we're expecting a baby to be looking at their parents' eyes and be able to slowly follow faces and starting to smile. So this is probably one of the big red flags for parents that if they are seeing that their baby maybe is having trouble doing that. That's one of the big ones that they will um, go to the GP with a really big concern. Um, another one might be that the eyes actually look abnormal. So the eyes might look very large or very small, have an unusual appearance. They might be teary, very, very watery. They might um, be very um, sensitive to light as well. So those are sort of things to look for. My husband and I did notice that her eyes were very, very small, but every child is different. So you sort of go on your merry way and you're in your little bubble of happiness with this perfect newborn baby. When she was about two weeks old, I really started to get quite concerned. She wasn't tracking, she was sleeping a lot. So in a 24 hour period, she'd probably sleep 20 hours out of the 24. Um, not always in a sound sleep, in quite a restless sleep. And looking back, I think she just didn't know the difference between awake or asleep. She had no reason to open her eyes. She couldn't see anything. Her cataracts were actually really 
um, really quite bad. Usually um, once someone thinks something's not quite right, they'll actually refer to a paediatric ophthalmologist, which is an, a children's eye doctor. Mm -hmm. Then usually from there, there's a whole range of tests that are carried out. When we saw the ophthalmologist, they um, did a whole range of tests on her eyes, um, trying to figure out what kind of vision she had. And then they referred us for an exam called an ERG. Um, and they basically put little magnetic things all around her face and, and head to measure her vision. And that's when they detected that her retina is not connecting to her brain or, brain or vice versa. When we left the ophthalmologist um, and we were driving home, neither of us said a word to each other. We actually just drove home in silence. And um, I kind of came home and I saw my mum and I just started crying and I think I went in my room. I didn't even know where Simra was at the time. I just sort of went in my room and I was there for about the next four hours. I guess the one thing that I did think of at the time was um, she's never had vision, so she doesn't actually know if she's lost anything. So she's learning life that particular way as she was born. Um, as far as she's concerned, we're like her. I'm like her. Um, and, you know, she's happy, she smiles, she laughs. She chat, um, chats, you know, she does lots of things that, you know, bring a smile to my face, um, which is, we've come very far from where we were three and a half years ago. For the future for Ivy, it's still very um, uncertain, but for any child, it's un uncertain where they're gonna go and, and what they're gonna do. Visually, we hope and we, we pray that um, technology will, will catch up. Um, but for now, we just we'll, we'll keep on doing what we're doing, and it's stimulating her as much as we possibly can through toys, through song, through different experiences. Um, she's amazing.